And because we're still trying to reach the people who believe these things, then this is how the order should be done in these churches. I've been struggling spiritually with 1 Corinthians 14 and 1 Timothy 2 in my heart. I've been in disagreement, but I believe there's a cultural context behind it. Yeah, there is. So let's go ahead and read the passages, then we can talk about it. 1 Corinthians 14, 33 through 35 says, For God is not the God of confusion, but of peace. As in all the churches of the saints, the women should keep silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but should be in submission, as the law also says. If there is anything they desire to learn, let them and let them ask their husbands at home, for it is shameful for a woman to speak in a church. Okay, a lot of people have a problem with this passage, but we're not done yet, so let's read another passage that's going to seem kind of off. 1 Timothy 2, 12 through 14 says, I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man. Rather, she is to remain quiet, for Adam was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived and became a transgressor. Okay, so... Seems kind of harsh, doesn't it? Doesn't really seem to fit with we are neither slave nor free nor Greek nor Jew nor male nor female in Christ, right? And Paul is the one that wrote that. So clearly, either he's a hypocrite or we need to understand the context. In the Corinthian church, it was common for women of that day to walk around wearing armor or bare-breasted and just exclaiming rude things. They were trying to gain their independence, but doing it in rude ways. Sound familiar? But what we have to understand is that Paul was not trying to corral all women. He was trying to help this church in organizing itself so that things could function and placing them under the protection and the um, authority of their, of their husbands. Would, have, would help with doing that because God does have a design for men and women. Men are meant to be the head of the household. That doesn't mean they're more important. That does not mean that they boss their women around. It just means that they are meant to protect the women and the children and they are meant to lead. And to lead, you don't have to be better. You just have to be in front. So putting them back in that context saying, hey, look, for your church here, you need to sit there and listen instead of just shouting everything all the time. That is the context that he's trying to fix. Because if you look at the rest of the passage, he's trying to help them do things in decent order. That's the idea. So what about 1 Timothy, where he does not permit a woman to teach or exercise authority over a man? Well, one thing you have to understand is that if women had gone around preaching, no men would have listened, men that weren't saved. Now, there is absolutely evidence that women had a very active role in the church. Philippians 4.3 says, Yes, I ask you also, true companion, help these women who have labored side by side with me in the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. So, labor. when Paul calls you a fellow laborer, it's not a light thing. It doesn't mean they just cook dinner for the men. No. They were active in the ministry. If you go um, back to Corinthians in chapter 11, it talks about how women prophesied in the church. He did not ridicule them for that at all. But again, he was dealing with cultural problems. So he's trying to help them to embrace the traditions of their culture so that the church can function. That's the idea. So when Paul says, I do not permit a woman to teach, he's not saying God doesn't. He's saying that because of the cultural problems, because we need to still do everything in decent order 